Another key area, clearly oncology as a whole, you know, the, there is a, uh, a focus and excitement around immunotherapy to, to, to a degree that hasn't been in the past. Uh, and certainly in solid tumors, it has really been incredibly impactful uh, in several diseases. Where do you think, uh, uh, Elias, in terms of, in terms of immunotherapy, uh, cellular-based therapies, CART, this whole uh, avenue, you know, PD-1 inhibitors, where do they stand, particularly in this subset of, of myeloid diseases like AML? You know, we're shifting our way of treatment from killing the cancer cell to harnessing the immune system they can go after the cancer cells. And the proof of evidence we have, for example, checkpoint inhibitor, where we know the cancer cell can uh, suppress the immune system from exerting its role. The checkpoint inhibitors, PD-1 inhibitors, PD-L1, uh, CTL4 uh, in melanoma, for example, in leukemia, we, try, we know in MDS there's overexpression of PD-1, and therefore trying to suppress, uh, trying to inhibit uh, the suppression of the immune system can upregulate the T cells function and kill the leukemic cells. Still too early, I mean, I. People are calling us, ah, immune oncology is like fashionable now. Everybody wants to use immune therapy everywhere. It doesn't work everywhere. Uh, we are having multiple trials at MD Anderson in MDS patients uh, who failed by ASA or decitabine uh, to be salvaged or upfront in combination in leukemia unfit patient using nivolumab plus ASA, and even in patients who are young to add nivolumab, which is a PD-1 inhibitor, to the standard backbone of chemotherapy. I'm very cautious right now. I don't have results to support it. We have the trial ongoing. Let's wait till next year. Uh, I mean, I, the excitement is great, but I don't think we have enough data to say immunotherapy is ready for AML. The CAR T cells, uh, still at the early stage, in ALL, it works at a high price of safety concern. The concern in AML is targeting the stem cell, sure. going into a plagia that will never end, plus cytokine syndrome. So it's still behind compared to, to ALL, although the UPenn group are manufacturing, are working on engineering the CAR T cell for myeloid disorders. I mean, I, I, I do, I think you, you raised earlier really the, the, this question of, of maintenance. And I think that, you know, they, they deserve exploration across the board, you know, but when I think about, you know, the intensity of AML, you know, does immune-based responses really fall best into, into a scenario where we have time, you know, where they've right. been cytoreduced? You know, there's a patient who, who approached me who, who had found this paper, you know, saying that, you know, avocados had an anti-leukemic effect, and, and he had, you know, he had 50% blast, and, and, and would that work? And I'm like, you know, not all the guacamole in the world is going to, <laughs> you know, it's going to put you in a CR with your acute leukemia, right. you know. But if you had, you know, a, a low intensity immune way to right. approach that risk, that, that group that have that high risk, that clearly might be of right. interest. Maybe even the interferons and other things that, that have improved their safety right. profile if you really had a very sure. minimal amount of clones. I think that that's the key point is like, where, where, is those, where the immune therapy would fit? And I think as you are suggesting, maybe this is not an upfront strategy. Maybe this is a maintenance strategy. And <coughs> excuse me, we know that from the allogeneic stem cell transplant because it is a form of sure, immune so therapy. Yeah. So maybe the patients that have minimal reserve disease, as we talked about, are those that patients that benefit. And as, as Eddie nicely summarized, I think there are different venues. It's definitely exciting. It opens a new venue to test for the patients, but they are not real time ready for, for patient in clinical practice. You know, and these options are being explored in maintenance strategy, like an evolumab single agent in somebody who's high risk or MRD positive, getting an evolumab for a year. We're using the monoclonal antibodies, anti CD1, three as well, one to three as a maintenance strategy. And then uh, Amgen have a program for BITE, uh, the, uh, the T cells and the myeloid cells uh, together. In relapse right now, I may go to maintenance later on, and Seattle Genetics have antibodies as well being explored too. So The other potential role for these immune therapies, as you mentioned, the CAR T cells, the risk is that you target a, a marker on the leukemia cells that's also present on the normal stem cells. Yeah. But this could be used as a bridge to transplant for patients sure. that have no other sure. mechanism to get there. Sure. Well,